Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Healing Connections podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Badness, and today we're talking with Liam Watt, who is an astrological counselor, who's had an astrological practice for the last 25 years, who prides himself as another Capricorn carpenter born on Christmas, who has an eclectic background, and has been a lifelong student of various healing modalities. Welcome, Liam. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's great to be here. Well, this is a topic that we both really love, and I would love to talk a little bit about how astrology has been important in your life or how you first got drawn to this topic. Well, astrology is an unsurpassed tool for self-knowledge. It is... it is. It is astrology is the language of the soul. It's the language of the psyche. Uh, in a sense, it's kind of a schematic of how our personalities are wired. Um, and there's, it's been the most helpful tool for me personally, getting to know myself, who I am, as the the inscription over the Temple of Apollo: "Know thyself." And why is that so important? And Shakespeare, in one of his plays, to thine own self be true, and surely as night follows day, to no other man can you be false. And I have to say, knowing oneself is not always the easiest um, assignment. And I found that to be particularly true with myself, and I know, you know lots of people who also I don't know why that is. I mean, we live here <laughs> in our own bodies and personalities, but we often have a, a distorted view. And astrology really illuminates. Uh, it, it's it's a language of archetypes. Um, and, um, you know, so there's a literary interpretation of archetype, like a, a, a sort of an iconic type of figure, like Robin Hood or Genghis Khan or. Joan of Arc are, in a way, they're literary archetypes. Um, Jung pointed out that there are archetypes, commonalities, common character traits that are universally the same throughout the collective unconscious. And Jung actually drew very strongly from astrology, but he couldn't present that to the scientific world, so he came up with other ways of presenting it. But we all have the archetype of Mars. How do we aggress? We, uh, what are our male qualities like? What are our assertive qualities like? We all have the archetype, uh, the archetype of Venus. How do we magnetize things to us? How do we draw energy? What are our, what's our feminine nature like? What's our, how do we process beauty? Um, and so forth. And there are dozens and dozens of these archetypes um, who have their own narrative their own story which is unique to each one of us going on in our soul I, I like i like the analogy of and how it is helpful this kind of is one of the healing aspects of it i have this image of being outside of a room a large room and in the room you just hear pure chaos there's just like a cacophony of of sounds of little kids running around and like old people moaning and people arguing and three different radio stations going on. And you open the door and it's completely dark inside. And when you open the door and you turn on the switch, everybody stops. And they look around and they say, hey, you've been sleeping in my bed. And somebody else says, well, you've been eating my porridge. And somebody else says, well, you've been sitting on my fishbowl. And you've been dancing with my wife. I'm sorry, I thought she was my mother. And put that monkey back. So people start to, you know, the elements start to sort themselves out. Astrology is turning on the light. It's illuminating what's going on in, an, in our subconscious. I, I hope that... Yeah, so that's, that's a wonderful description. And how did you come to astrology? Oh, well... I guess I have to say I was born with a mystical bent. Um, I wouldn't call it psychic so much. Um, somewhat psychic, but I, I, even as a kid, I was having 
kind of unexplained mystical experiences. Uh, some very lucid dreams. I dream, repeated dream that I could levitate and my body became pure light when I was levitating. And it's a wonderful ecstatic feeling. Um, I grew up on an area in an area on Long Island that had maybe 200 years earlier been inhabited by the Matinecock Indians. And we would find quartz arrowheads all over our property. But I would also, when I was alone, I don't know, as a young boy, eight, nine years old, being back in the woods, there was a young Indian. For me, uh, he was a grown man, but he was probably, I would say, I felt like in his 20s, who would come and show me their ways. And I learned, you know, and anybody else would say, I taught myself how to make a bow and arrows and leather moccasins and, you know, sew bird feathers onto arrows and stuff like that. But, you know, I told my mother once that I had this Indian friend. He said, she said, that's nice, Liam. Don't tell anybody about that. <laughs> so, and then, I think it was in the sixth grade, um, a professional hypnotist came to our school and did a performance. And I was amazed at what he could get kids to do in a state of hypnosis. So that really piqued my interest. And um, I'm, I'm not much of an academic. There wasn't many resources to find out about hypnotism, but I started experimenting with it myself. And I think I started doing what would now be called creative visualization. And then at some point, probably around, and it might have been 15, somebody gave me a book on yoga. And it was mostly um, hatha yoga, physical asanas, and how to cleanse yourself and all of this. But there was the, the back chapter was on meditation, so, which is what I went to. I ignored all the rest. And when I began to meditate, I noticed that I could see the North Star with my eyes closed. I mean, literally see it. And it was inside in my room, which was at the upstairs of our house. And if I focused on that, I could see the entire sky, all the constellations for 360 degrees. And I could pretty much do this at will. And I told some of my friends about it who were skeptical, thought I was crazy, but I said, so let's do a little test. Take me out in the backyard, blindfold me, spin me around. My one friend had a, had a big field in his backyard, so it was open. Spin me around until I'm dizzy and fall on the ground, and then I'll sit there when I'm blindfolded, and that happened. I'm like, okay, there's the North Star, there's Cassiopeia, there's the Big Dipper. And at one point, I was actually able to get one of these guys. Now, this is I'm probably 19 by this time. Could actually get one of the most skeptical ones to have the experience himself just by focusing on his third eye. So something had opened in me, and it only happened for just like the month before my birthday for about three years. I think I was 18, 19, and 20 when that happened. So that told me a long-winded way of saying that there is some pull, there is some, you know, there's some electromagnetic connection between everything. And I don't know why I started asking people what their birthday was, but started noticing similarities between, we had a, in college, we had a Capricorn party at the end of the year. It was probably 10 of us who were all born, you know, somewhere between late December and early January. And many of us are still in touch today. And we could, you know, I, I knew, <clears throat> well, so anyways, I just started casually studying it and I saw the correspondences. And <clears throat> I am but not at all academically inclined, and I'm a terrible student. But through the years, I would read more and more. And, um, and then at one point, you know, I did try to learn. Casting a chart is very difficult. I, I, hats off to anybody in the old days who could do the math. I found it very challenging. It would take me two hours to do somebody's chart. So it was just, it was too much work. But when computer programs came out, boom, that's when I was able to just go click, there's the chart. Now let's study it. <clears throat> and to anybody who's interested, 
you have to read and read and read and read and read everything you can get your hands on and practice. Do and do your mother's chart, your best friend's chart, your brother's too, every chart that anybody will let you do and practice and practice and practice. And you will see the correspondences and you'll learn how it all fits together. Mm. That's a beautiful description of how your own inner sight and your own ability to recognize correspondences and the electromagnetic pull mm. uh, led you on this journey. And how has astrology helped you in your life? <clears throat> or has it helped you? <laughs> I would be groping in the dark, I would say. I would have like that analogy of the room full of chaos. It's a perfect description of, of I think, what I'd be like. I wouldn't have a clue. Um, I remember when I got my first computer printout at Grand Central Station in New York City. It was like a pop-up booth. And it's the first guy, Neil Mickelson, who was the first one to create an astrological program. He was a, he was a computer programmer in the early days, and he was an astrologer, and he put the two together. And I got this printout. And I read that printout dozens of times, and it revealed, it, it just, it gave, it gave a language, it put a handle on all the things that I'd been feeling, but couldn't, couldn't be clear about within myself. Why do I, why do I have this particular conflict? Why do I feel stressed in these situations? Why, what about this gift? I have this gift. Is it a real gift or, or am I kidding myself? Um, it, ju it was just invaluable to helping me get to know myself. Yeah. And so do you feel that we are all fated to have certain experiences, that there's a certain amount of predeterminism with astrology? I, th I think that astrology describes our inclinations and that those inclinations will operate more or less automatically until we bring consciousness. No. Oh. And that's, I believe that's where the page turns to where our own intentionality um, prevails over the, what feels like just this kind of, like we're riding on a train, you know, and it's, and it's like, it's somebody else in the engineer's cab, you know, because it does. I mean, there is this, this momentum that we have from our karma, mm -hmm. our life inclinations, which astrology describes in exquisite detail. Mm -hmm. And for those who are listening, who maybe astrology is some, a topic that's new to them. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who sort of say, well, the, constellations have shifted or um, do you have any comments for those who might want to just write it off and mm. any any thoughts on that I, I have lots of questions about that and they're very valid questions um, and and you really have to get into the astronomy of astrology mm -hmm. the various different interpretations I will just say as I say to I mean, you know, I meet many skeptics along the way. Um, if you approach it with an open mind, the correspondences will be undeniable. And, um, you know, my best, my best friend and, uh, and former astrology teacher, Alex Mallon, who was an advanced amateur astronomer, he started studying astrology to disprove it. And in a very short time, he started, you know, he started studying, he got into an accredited astrology course and started practicing as a very young man. Um, I was recently asked, I met through a friend, I met a psychiatrist, really nice man, but a scientist, clearly. And my friend introduced me, here's Liam, he's an astrologer. Oh, why did you say that? He's a, psych he's a scientist. <laughs> and he turns to me and he looks at me very kindly and he said, so? How do you explain it? I said, oh, what, astrology? Yeah. And it just came to me that, uh, that there are bands of the electromagnetic spectrum 
that have yet to be quantified. We don't know everything there is to know about the universe. And as I say, yeah, we're granted, you know, the, the precession of the equinox, the, the points have moved, the North Pole isn't now where it used to be. Uh, the planets that we are saying, you know, I have sun in Capricorn, nope, the sun was actually in Sagittarius. I don't know how to answer those. I will just say, follow the rules, follow the propositions, and you'll see the correspondences. It's undeniable. And it, and can it, be, it can be into exquisite detail and precision. It can be. I've predicted, not to brag, but, you know, I told a client, be careful if you don't want to get pregnant because you're very, very prone to getting pregnant in this next period of time. She called me up two months later, pregnant. Um, had a friend who I read for on a regular basis, and I said, be careful in the next two weeks driving your car. Go slow. Get in the car. Put on your safety belt and say, there's an atmosphere of danger here. Called me up, I think probably a month later. He was in a car accident that was minimized by the fact that he was somewhat prepared and being more cautious. Um, and, I, you know, I can't for the life of me remember. I, I predicted a stock market crash, the stock market crash of 2001. My friend Alexander and I used to have a, a, a public access, you know, the old days of pre-YouTube. All we had was public access. And we had a live call and astrology show in Woodstock. And we had one caller who was interested in the stock market. And he was always calling and say, tell me, so what's gonna, what's good to invest in now? I don't know anything about the stock market, but I took a look at the chart of the Dow. Every entity can have a birth chart. So I brought up the Dow, I brought up the transits, and I said, this was February of 2000. And I said, well, about mid-June, there's going to be, the bubble is going to burst. And I was right within a week. I don't know anything about the stock market, nothing. But I know a bit about astrology. So, so it can be helpful in that way. My focus is on emotional healing because that's how I've used it. I had a very traumatized childhood. And I've had some very challenging adventures as an adult. And astrology really helps to, for me, with another client. I'm just saying that so that I, I have a broad experience and which leaves me feeling very non-judgmental about anybody, just with a great deal of compassion for being human. It's a tough trip here. <laughs> and um, some with an easier ride than others. But when I have a client, I can see exactly what the dynamics are going on, what the knots are that's got them tied up if they're struggling with something. It's just, you know, there are certain elements that I always look at first. What are the position of the nodes? That describes what is your past life karma? What have you, what have you brought into this life? And what direction do you need to move into in order to grow? What is Saturn? What position is Saturn in? It's that's your limitations. That the lesson, those are the lessons you must learn. Saturn talks about those. And Chiron, the wounded healer. Where is your wound? What is the wound? And I look at those three things first to get this is why this person has come to me. And then all of the other, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, all of that, Neptune, all of that is fit in pretty much around that essential structure that I work with. And again, it just incredibly illuminating. Um, I offer profiles to psychotherapists who, you know, may or may not understand the dynamic that they're being presented with. But astrology just articulates it um, in, in a kind of narrative that's uh, just really clear. Liam, I love that your focus is on emotional healing. That's actually how we connected. We did a training with John Ruskin, mm -hmm. uh, emotional clearing training. We both happen to be sun sign Capricorns as well. Mm -hmm. And I found that in my healing work as well, that that emotional component 
uh, can be very significant, which really is very much connected to the consciousness, right? Which is a lot of what it seems astrology can can help us understand. Yes. Well, I think that there is um, an emotional energy behind every physical manifestation. Um, you know, there are schools of thought that we are spirit that comes down through the emotional body, the mental body, the astral body, and then the physical body. So that the physical body really is a manifestation of how we're vibrating on a much deeper level, both, you know, mentally and emotionally. And, um, and I, I, I believe that and I adhere to that. And I see that in so many cases, um, disease is brought on by disharmony and we want to say disharmony in the soul, disharmony in the psyche and astrology can illuminate that. And, you know, you mentioned that we, we met in this training. Um, I found not too long into my, when I opened my practice, that astrology is very, very illuminating. It's an unsurpassed diagnostic tool. I don't know anything that can describe the human, you know, individual personality anywhere near the exquisite detail that astrology can. If you know how to read the symbols, right, Liam? That's it. It's, it's in the interpretation. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really where an astrologer has to learn to master the art. Um, and and that, that aspect is an art. The other, the chart itself is data. It's just a map of the sky at the time that you were born. But what that means um, and how that describes the person, that's really an art, putting all of those different elements together. And some have more of a natural inclination than others. Um, for some, astrology seems to open a window to a deeper intuition, which I'm sure is part of your experience because you are such a strong intuitive. And I'm laughing because that was my next question and we are very psychically intuitively yeah. connected. I was going to ask you how much you feel you're using intuition with astrology. Um, more so now intentionally um, than ever before. I'm, I'm, I'm really now asking for the guidance to, to come forward through, through that window. Um, and that, you know, that's always been there to a certain degree. But it can give you deeper layers, right? More so than maybe just kind of the rough interpretation of symbols or the what the what the planets represent or the house that they're in and so forth. Well, it brings it breathes life into the the whole thing. It brings the, it you know it allows you to see the whole spirit. And for me, it's just it's usually a flash. It's really just a quick flash. But that flash is is like you know, Microsoft, it's, it's like microcircuit. It's got tons of information in that little flash um, that will keep on speaking. So you mentioned how astrology has helped you in your life to help navigate and understand yourself. Is there an example or a story you can share about how you've helped somebody with health or healing? You mentioned how you, from a predictive level, you helped somebody prevent, it sounds like an injury in a car. Are there any other stories you can share? Yeah, lots. I mean, pretty much not, not to blow my own horn, but when people leave this office after an hour and a half of sitting with me, they're, they're truly grateful. Um, so again, just the illumination of what's going on, which see in an otherwise um, opaque kind of setting, that you can put a handle on things, that you can be much more intentional with things. Um, I've had a number of clients with depression and combination of seeing what it is in the astrology as would indicate the depression and then some other useful tools, some of the emotional clearing tools, some bioenergetic tools, um, you know, that I've picked up both from my own process of, of therapy and being in therapy and, and the trainings, the various trainings I've had. 
So, you know, just somebody left here yesterday, an, an individual, um, just being extremely grateful. I, 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 I didn't get a, um, I didn't ask him to describe how has this helped you. But again, it's, it's that, it's that being able to see what previously was just a cacophony of energies going on and being able to articulate and being able to say, you know, tell that monkey to get back in the cage. Tell that student, to, no, you can't go out and play. Do that homework. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's more awareness of the self. And because there are different planets that have a particular shall we just say in some simple terms, action. And then there are houses of where that happens. And then there are the constellation or the signs of perhaps one might say how that happens. And so Excellent. I would imagine, because it sounds like, I know Liam, you do this so quickly that it's that it's it's really second nature to you when you're working with somebody, um, that being able to get those clues from an astrological chart to understand how somebody might even through their Mercury or Gemini, being able to, how they would even be able to receive the information you share, you probably are able to filter it in a way for them to even be able to receive it, I would imagine. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, um, Moon and Gemini, I have a repeat client with Moon and Gemini. Moon and Gemini, they like to flit emotionally. They like to go from flower to flower like a butterfly. They, they, they like... Um, versatility and they, they think about their emotions rather than feel their emotions. So they have this, this repeat client who again and again, go deeper, sit still, really have taught her various forms of meditation to still that emotion, that jumpiness, mm -hmm. sort of mercurial aspect to, to feeling. She's not feeling her feelings. She's thinking about her feelings. Mm -hmm. So Astrology lets you guide, and as you said, I'll, I'll reiterate that for people who are interested. The planetary energies describe the type of energy. Mars, aggression. Venus, magnetism. The moon, mother, home, security. The sun, who we are. What's our essential spirit like? Jupiter. Where is it that we have great good luck and expand very easily? Saturn, where are we limited? So those are the planetary energies. The sign describes how that energy is going to unfold. Saturn in Cancer is much different than Saturn in Capricorn. Saturn in Capricorn is very disciplined, gets things done, very, you know, nose to the grindstone. Saturn in Cancer is whiny, it's emotional, it's overly sensitive, it's a baby, never wants to grow up. So that kind of, so that the signs say how that energy will manifest. And the houses tell us in what area of life these things, these are going to happen. And that's what the 12 houses describe. Our outer personality in our body, our values, our mode of thinking, our rational mind, that kind of thing. I don't want to turn it into a full astrology lesson, but. Well, it's helpful because I would imagine that there are people with various experiences and backgrounds listening to this. And with mm -hmm. our talk about it being a healing with astrology, I think that it's helpful to have a basic understanding of, of astrology because it, it is there's so much depth to it and so many levels to it. And I've been studying it for several years now and I'm amazed. I'll be studying it for the rest of my life and probably still consider myself an intermediate student for the rest of my life because there's so much to understand. However, I have used it in some of the sessions I've worked with. Um, I have used it when I worked with clients and it can be like you say, quite illuminating for understanding um, what's important to them, where there might be challenges and even just having a conversation about some of those aspects and where their strengths are and then uh, that that can help them to understand themselves and to know what it, it helps them kind of click into place a little bit more because i think sometimes our minds can make us question and ourselves and 
And so being able to understand that a person can have more confidence maybe going forward. And I know for me, yeah, there, it's, it, it is amazing how being able to know ourselves, at least in my life, I, I can only speak from my firsthand experience that it has helped me to accept and love myself more, which I have found in the healing arts is a huge, um, if not one of, or the main component that's often lacking in people behind a lot of physical and emotional disease. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and I think it's that, that point where we bring conscious intentionality that really turns the page from fate to free will. Mm. You know, which is the that's that's the big philosophical discussion, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, and then it gets into transits, right? So this natal chart is where the snapshot of where the planets were when you're born, and then there's the transits and then progressions, and yeah. it gets into then relationships with synastry and composites, yeah. which yeah. <laughs> Because that's an, those are important uh, facets of it. Through the technique of progressions, which I won't go into the technicality of, that's for an astrology class. But with progressions, we can tell how the soul is unfolding and what stage of growth uh, we are at with our process of individuation. And I think that's a, a, Jung, a Jungian term but it's used by many of the classical astrologers also. Um, individuation, we are here to become who we are at the core. And the progressions describe kind of, well, let's see, we're in graduate school right now, working on a particular master's in a particular, you know, it, sh it shows how we're unfolding. Um, and that's very helpful when someone says, you know, should I start a business? Well, it might be indicated that you need to learn more about what it is. Um, it might be indicated that you're just being rash or impulsive, or it might indicate that, yeah, you're right on, right on target. Go for it. Yeah. Or like, why is this happening to me? Why do I have this happening in my life or well, how that, long is it going to last? Yeah. Or what, a, is there anything I can learn from this? Yeah. Well, that's a very common you know, people repeating relationship patterns are very commonly sitting in these chairs in my office. You know, well, well, I got another jerk. <laughs> or, you know, uh, whatever it might be. And again, with relationships, I really do focus on, um, I, I promote myself as that that's my specialty. For one thing, because I've had so many of my own. And I've learned a lot that way. Um, and again, there's nothing that describes the subconscious dynamics between two people. I don't know, I don't know any other system that can so again, I use the word exquisitely describe the interaction between the numerous dozens of elements between two people. And there are dozens and dozens. And, you know, over time, they play out. I, I see them. And, you know, many people come, look, you know, like we're really attracted. Uh, what do you think? I try to be really honest and give, you know, tell them what I see, not what I think, what I see. You know, I see that, you know, this causes the attraction. And this is perhaps the karma you're trying to work out through this attraction and here are some stumbling blocks and here are some areas that can help support getting around those stumbling blocks um and, and that's just really kind of general um you know description but it, it can be extremely helpful to relationship counselors absolutely and relationships are so important we all want love relationships yeah. are we need each other. They're really the lifeblood of our lives. I mean, we we're social creatures and we, we learn a lot and grow or hopefully grow in relationships and astrology can, can help understand those dynamics. I think it's wonderful what you're doing with people. Thank you. Why do you think astrology has endured for so long? Because it's 
Because it works. Yeah. And because it works in a most unique, um, detailed way. Mm-hmm. Lot, there's lots of other systems. I mean, I've studied Kabbalah and Tarot, you know, the Tree of Life, both of which are actually based on, uh, they have an astrological basis. Um you know, Reiki, uh, the Enneagram. Enneagram is wonderful. Um, I haven't studied it much, but I'm, you know, I'm beginning to uh, get exposure to it. And it's, it, I, I find a lot of validity. Yeah. So- and I love that you brought up the tarot because it is, it's, re- it's correlated to the seasons. And so is the I Ching and yeah. the yin and the yang, right? The cycles of the day, the cycles of the year. Um, yeah. The cycles with within ourselves and the cosmos. Yes. Yeah, and then that really gets into spirituality, which is fundamental to to most of us, right? That having a larger meaning or purpose in life, and that's what's really has astounded me with looking at people's charts. I haven't worked with as many people as you have. I use it again sometimes in my healing practice, but I'm. Uh, not as practiced as you are, but I will say that I am amazed at how consistent it is with showing their MC, right? What their outer expression is, that mm-hmm. highest point that they can achieve in their lives um, and so forth. Yeah, right. And some people, when they hear the word astrology, think of just their sun sign. Is there anything you want to share about the sun sign or for those who might be listening who are new to astrology, um, what you think might help them moving forward if maybe having a session or if there's, I know you mentioned reading, that's like three questions in one, but. (laughs) Well, um, you know, there are some sun sign reports out there that are astonishingly accurate and helpful. Um, I wrote them, I, I would write the sun sign reports for the local radio station for a little while, but um, years ago. But I find it's too general. I would say uh, Eric Francis is a well-known, now internationally known astrologer who does really astonishingly um, accurate sun sign reports. Um, but again, we're only that only describes one element, but it's an important element. And uh, Eric usually picks on picks up on what the important influences are with with every given sign, and he's gotten really good at that. I have to hats off to him in that regard. Um, you know, I I still use as my original Bible Isabel Hickey's book that is called astrology a cosmic science and she lays out in a very neatly organized way all of the basic principles um, in quite a detailed way and I worked with that book alone for study I mean I wasn't practicing at the time but just while I was learning I worked with that book alone probably for more than five years and then there's so many good authors out there now. And because of computers, there's so much research, so much more research going on than there ever has been throughout history. So, um, you know, there are the classics, uh, Liz Green, read anything by Liz Green for deep insights. Uh, Robert Hand, like the father of contemporary astrology. Planets and Transit, and any of any of his books. Uh, Stephen Forrest, wonderful, um, a humanistic approach. And then just read and read and read. When I decided that I was going to do it professionally, the first time in my life, I was up until three o'clock in the morning, every night, night after night after night after night after night, just reading and reading and reading. And again, same thing. Probably asking anybody, can I do your chart? Can I do your chart? Can I do your chart? And once I had a program that was able to just go bling and there's the chart. So, yeah. Super helpful. Is there anything else you would like people to know about astrology? How to say it. I want to, I want to talk about God, but it's really difficult because 
once you know you can't you can't describe God in any way. Um, one, once you say something about God, you've limited the unlimitable. You know, you, it's very difficult to describe the infinite, the the bliss, the unspeakable bliss, uh, the omnipotence, the omnipresence. You know, these are all ways that we are try to wrap our mind around God. But I believe that this is a very ordered, a very well-ordered universe. And astrology describes what's going on in our, what we now know is just a tiny little corner of what is apparently, you know, vastly unending. And, and I think of um, Stephen Hawking, who died in recent years, who uh, his last work was called um, The Grand Design. And, and in that, at the end, they postulated that if the balance of elements had been off, if anything after the Big Bang had been off by as much as one thousandth of one percent, that nothing would have come together. Matter energy would not have become matter, matter would not have taken forms that it can evolve. And yet they still wouldn't say that that was an intelligent, you know, an intelligently, that there was some supreme being. My feeling is, the problem with scientists is they are locked into the rational mind, left brain thinking, rationality. You can no more understand a mystical experience with the rational mind, then the eye can see music. It's the wrong organ. If you, if you want a mystical experience, if you want to have a, an experience of being with God, realizing that we are with God, realizing that God is in everything, and it's just incredibly, incredibly well organized. Despite how we've mucked it up here on the planet and how totally insane it appears and how much evil there appears to be. It's my belief. I'm not, not proselytizing any particular approach, but this is God's universe and we are all it. And astrology is, astrology shows a certain portion of the organization of it. I really do. I believe that it's a it's a divine tool in that way. Hmm. Very well said, Liam. Thank you for that. And since we are in challenging times at the moment, mm -hmm. and there's a very significant, well, there's some astrological aspects happening currently. If you could just mm -hmm. share a little bit of what those are and not that we can necessarily predict what's going to happen, right? Because we do have free will. Mm -hmm. However, there are aspects that do seem to correlate with certain energies and, and um, influences that way. What do you see that's happening now? And can you provide some insight or some hope for maybe healing in our society or culture if you, if you have any uh, words of wisdom in that regard? <laughs> far, far be it from words of wisdom, but I have an opinion. Um, so I think, well, I'll just say, about a year and a half ago, uh, a group of the best astrologers in our region got together in late 2019. I don't know, it was in October or something. And we looked ahead to 2020 and said, okay, what's, what's 2020 going to be like? There were 12 of us. Nobody could find a positive thing to say about 2020. And, you know, none of us are really doom and gloom. None of us are pessimists. We've been doing this kind of work for years and years, you know, combined probably hundreds of years in that room. Nobody could find a positive thing to say about 2020. Hmm. Um, we didn't do that for 2021. But I'm going to say that there is this brief kind of honeymoon period as we entered the year where Jupiter and Saturn joined together in the very beginning of Aquarius. 
the very first part of Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is optimism. Aquarius is um, radical joy, radical change. Um, it's the planet of revolution. It's the planet of change. It's a planet of creativity and, and unique self-expression. So Jupiter, the planet of expansion and all benevolence, conjoined with Saturn, the planet of structure and limitation and, and discipline, those two come together, things get done. People that have those two together in their chart are very effective. In, in the area that, that Jupiter and Saturn join in their chart, they're effective in that, in that area. Um, almost universally, I've never seen it fail. So we have that now, currently in the beginning part of Aquarius. Hopefully the um, change of presidency offers some respite from the insanity that we've been experiencing. And, um, but I think it's going to be a rather short-lived honeymoon. Aquarius will move on through, I'm sorry, Jupiter will move on through Aquarius rather quickly and leave Saturn sitting there to plod through more slowly. And Saturn is going, is now approaching being a square at square angle, 90 degree angle, which is a conflicting angle to Uranus in Taurus. And I mean, in a nutshell, that just says conflict. Conflict on a broad scale. So I think 2020 unleashed the dogs of hell in many ways, both politically and with COVID. Although I would say those dogs have been barking for a long time in our country. And I don't want to get into a political, I have a very political side. I'm very interested in political astrology. And I'm very interested in healing the body politic, you know, in having a society that functions and um, where all can benefit. And, you know, I've watched through the years that are like, what, what happened to America? And so, so I don't want to go in, into that in depth. I mean, I will to anybody who's interested. I will give my uh, my take on the last fifty. But America's going through some changes, essentially. America has gone through some changes. Has, has gone from being the beacon of freedom to the beacon of tyranny, to the uh, to the dark uh, cloud of tyranny around the planet. And we're known as such everywhere, but here. I have friends in France. I have friends in Finland. I have friends in South Africa. They all say, what the hell? What are you guys doing? How are you letting that happen? Don't you people vote? You know? <laughs> and um, yeah, because we've really caused some damage. And it's not reported in the mainstream press because the mainstream press is controlled by those who are doing the damage. So what's coming is a response to that. But it's a chaotic response to that. It's the, um, you know, there'll be right-wing extremists, there'll be left-wing extremists, and they'll be at each other's throats rather than working together to overcome the real tyranny that we've been up against. And we, we, we have, we're being taken over by a very small elite group, a worldwide group. Our country and our military has been used by this worldwide group to exert its will. So I'm going deeper than I want. So what's coming for the next two years is I think more conflict mm -hmm. and more chaos. And my hope is that that will awaken and illuminate the deeper situation behind go, going deeper and going further and going behind what the mainstream media is not willing to show us. And this, format that we're using right here. There are many really good news sites and, you know, both politically and also like your show, you know, lots of spiritual information so that we're growing both spiritually and 
hopefully with political awareness, because the change isn't going to happen while we sit on our meditation cushions and take care of ourselves in that way. The change is going to happen in the streets. The change is going to happen by people uniting together to say, no more. Mm -hmm. No more, never again. And, and I think that that will be brought about out of necessity. Kind of like, you know, when somebody gets a catastrophic illness. I don't want to sound pessimistic, but we have a catastrophic illness. And to the extent that we can learn to heal ourselves, and what is, what's the source of that illness? Right now, we're putting, you know, what we have offered to us are Band-Aids on a deeply rooted cancer. Hopefully, this chaos out of that will come an awareness. And again, from changing from the momentum of fate, turning the page to intentional conscious intention that we can create. I, I have, in terms of what our new paradigm could be, from my perspective, should be, was expressed most beautifully in John Lennon's song, Imagine. You know, and that was 50 years ago. And I, for me, it's the most important song of the 20th century, and I hope becomes the anthem of the 21st century, because we can do that, but not if we're asleep. And hopefully, you know, the cages are going to get rattled, and we're going to have to wake up and figure out, and really cooperatively, collectively figure out what to do and how to get to that imagined state. So I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful. We'll go through hell. But Winston Churchill said, when you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> so. Well, thank you for that, Liam. And mm -hmm. so being able to connect within ourselves, but then also connect with each other for positive mm -hmm. change. Do you think that the age of Aquarius will help us in any regard in this? A lot of people are talking about the age of Aquarius at the moment. Yeah. Well, yes, this was supposed to be, um, in, in my recollection, about the 437th real beginning of the age of Aquarius. I think the age of Aquarius started, which again, you know, we're talking about a 26,000 year cycle, the procession of equinox that was broken into 12 segments of a little over 2000 years each. So 2,000 years, you know, give or take 100 years here or there, I think the age of Aquarius started when Ben Franklin flew a kite and lightning struck the key and he discovered, you know, electricity, and then that began to get harnessed. I think there was another significant uh, indication when the Wright brothers got a machine to get up off the ground, you know, by itself, under its own power. Um, and then in less than 60 years time, we went from that crude modified bicycle with wings, we were on the moon in 60 years. Phenomenal. That's, you know, and now computers, you know, that um, information which is blowing all our circuits way beyond anything we can handle, um, but also providing uh, formats and um, platforms like this, where we where we can and Emmy, God bless you. The work that you're doing and the work that you're putting out there and sharing, I am so happy to be to know you, to be associated with you, and to receive the blessings that you, you know, because I'm you know I'm an old guy, I'm an old '60s hippie revolutionary, and that that can be harsh to the younger crowd. I know that. <laughs> um, so you know you've got you've got the sweetness and and this is helping to to broadcast that trying to share some love and light with everybody mm. well liam watt thank you so much for being here with me on healing connections and if anybody would like to get in touch with you is there a way they can contact you an email that you so my email so if you reach me by email I'm happy to I check my email all the time. Happy to send you a copy of the website and, and then we can get in touch and um, 
just talk about how we want to work. So that is I am Liam Watt at gmail.com. I am Liam Watt at gmail.com. Mm, I am. I love it. Thank you for being here with me, Liam. Thank you for having me, Emmy. It's been an honor. I mean it. Me too. I could just listen to you for hours. So much beautiful information. And thank you all for joining us here. Until next time, namaste and be well.